evening everyone how are you all thank you for joining me in the studio today i've got lots of um, new little goodies to show you which have arrived last week so perfect opportunity to show you them today some um, must have some maybe treats for yourself whatever you're doing so for those of you who don't know who i am i'm sure you do welcome to the studio my name's tone derrick and i'm a guest presenter over on create and craft tv and the studio is here for you and for me so that we can inspire each other. So basically we create and make anything to do with cards, stamps, dyes, painting, colouring, anything that takes your mind off everyday life, that's what we're here for. And we're all here to inspire each other. So um, before I do my first demonstration, I am going to show you some of the new products that we are um, we have live and they are live on our Facebook page and they are, sorry, not Facebook page, they are live on our website. All you need to do is pop FBL into the search engine. Maybe not, I'm not sure if I've actually linked to them. But basically we have a whole new Himmy range and I'm gonna go through them right now for you. So let me just grab my box of wonders. So let me just see one second. Sorry, we have our dog in studio today and she's up to mischief, so we need to get her sorted. Right, so first of all, I wanted to tell you a couple of things that are back in stock, which is amazing. So we have the fabulous uh, oil pencils. Um, you will know them in a green packet, but they're now in an orange packet. So you're not missing out on anything. They are exactly the same pencils. They are our beautiful oil pastel pencils that blend amazingly together and give you unique looking cards where if you're not a colourist, it soon makes you into a colourist. And also, we have some fabulous new. So you will all know our watercolour tubes. These are um, back in stock. These have been out of stock for a while. And these are back in stock. They're the 18. We now have Goash in the 18 too. So if you're wanting to try something new. So Goash basically, um, when you paint with it, it reactivates. So if you paint white and then you put a purple on top, it'll reactivate what's underneath. So you can get a beautiful smooth blend, create depth and dimension. So there's those. And then we have the fabulous acrylics, which once dry are permanent. So if you want to layer build that way and create dimension up that way, by colour to colour you can do that too so it's personal preference if you want to try something new um, I'm not I'm not here to hard sell if you've got something in your stash that works and you're painting with them already you can um, go and use them absolutely but these are some new ones and over the course of the next few weeks I'm going to be stepping away from these and working on these to see where it takes me. I love the um, like flower paintings where you pick up some white on one side of your brush and some pink on the other side of your brush and you paint petals and it gives you like a two-tone petal. That's what I'm working on at the moment, so bear with me, but I, mean, I am using these for that. So um, they're a great starting point and they're a really good price because they are high-end products. So there's those three. Two must-haves. So we have an eraser pencil. So basically it's an eraser in the form of a pencil so you can sharpen it in your fabulous sharpeners that you've got. And it's perfect for erasing maybe where you've drawn a pencil line to create a die cut or where you've put something, it will rub it out. It's also good for your oil, oil pastel pencils. It won't rub them out, but as I've been playing with it, what I found is to create a highlight, it pushes it back. So if you've coloured in a dark navy and you want to create an, uh, like an eye and you want to create a little bit of um, a light reflection on the iris of the eye, this takes some of it back out so it creates a little bit of light and shade. So that's a must in my opinion. I'm probably going to have lots of these in my stash. And then we have a Maya eraser. Now you all know of your putty erasers that remove your horrible fingerprints, smudges, glue you know all the bits we don't like so you've popped a sequin on and then you've got a blob of glue and sequins falling off and you need to remove the mark this is your put it eraser so i've got lots of these they are all over can i find one of them absolutely not so basically it's soft it's a little bit like plasticine but they're great for taking away mucky marks on your artwork and glue so these are great go-to's and these are probably a must and these are so inexpensive and then can you see I'm working out of a box? It's crazy, hey? Because obviously we're not here anymore. And then lastly, I wanted to show you some fab new products. Now these, um, 
these really really do light up my day because I love paint brushes as you know so um, we've worked closely with Himmy to put a collection together for the card maker so we didn't want the big tall ones with the great big candles that we've got and I've got and use and love but you know getting them to telly in your craft room they're a bit bit too much so I asked for a smaller pack which had your necessary brushes in there and your necessary sizes so we've put these ones together for you and we've got two colour waves in this style so we have pink and blue and these are your flat brushes so again perfect for gouache, acrylic, watercolours and nylon hair so they'll wash and clean perfectly and you have some fabulous sizes in there too right up to a 10 you get five brushes as well so you've probably got every size in there that you absolutely need so if you bought the purple ones that we brought to you they were sort of like a tester if you did buy the purple ones i would say you probably don't need these ones but they are now nicely packaged and they come um, in five different sizes so go and check these out on the website too and then so therefore um, a whole host of mediums these are specific watercolour in brushes okay they have the round head you have a massive size one in there as well again five brushes um, the hair is slightly thinner on this it holds a lot more water which allows you to move your paint around more freely if you have brushes in your stash that work stick with them I'm not here to hard sell but if you do need some brushes these are a great starting point they're of a high end for su at such an affordable price um, we absolutely love the Himmy and my range they are um, really really good and the feedback's been amazing so if you are in search for some brand new brushes this is the place to come okay so whilst I um, get ready for my first demonstration and clear the decks here's a little inspiration love that demo um, in today's studio we are going to be using the papers again and the stamps because I appreciate a lot of you still maybe not pick them up and it's an opportunity to build that QR code so when you are ready to um, make some cards and things they're going to be there for you so in today's studio I'm going to use some of our blue paper 
pink papers. So the bird from the blue collection and I'm also going to be using the lovely Thirsty Brush embossing powders in the pen and I'm going to show you a fabulous techni technique that's going to elevate your cards which I found super cool today. So on my desk now I have my Eureka and the pen I'm referring to is what comes in the collection with Claire's starter kit. Now if you missed Claire's show yesterday, she was live on Create and Craft, there might be some left. Um, she had an epic show, loads of sell out, super proud of her. But one of the kits was this embossing powder and this pen. Okay, so um, the pen is a fabulous alternative to an ink pad to get um, different effects on your cards and things like that. And I'm going to show you a great way to use this pen right now. So first of all, just one second ladies and gents, I just need to show you something. Because she's obviously wanting to get in on the action. Say hi. She's walking around and looking at me as if to say, please pick me up. She won't go in a basket. And she's eating all the bits of paper, so I don't know. Off you go. Off you go. Right, back to the demo. So I'm going to use the bird. I have a black piece of cardstock here and I've just anti-static the whole area. Now the anti-static bag is key to this demonstration, okay, because the technique I'm going to show you, you might get lots of flecks and flares all over if you don't anti-static. So if you haven't got an anti-static bag, buy one, whether it be from me or somewhere. This is key to great embossing. So I have the stamp on the door here ready and I'm just going to use a sticky ink pad. So I'm just going to ink up the stamp all over, light taps all over the stamp. And what we're going to do is we are going to stamp it out. And get lots of coverage on there on that black card. Just pop her out, Adrian. It's fine. Thank you. And we're just going to push it down, make sure it picks up all that lovely detail. I'm sorry about the headshot. I'm just going to look in. Yeah, that's a good print, is that one? So I'm going to use the gold that's. <coughs> now, she also does the gold in the pots, and it's the same gold that's in this mini as well. This is like a little tester pot to show you. So it's the same gold that I am using. So if you did get that one, it's the same. So let's heat emboss this one first. You can see it's picked up all that beautiful detail. All this is just embossing powder, it does brush away, don't worry about it. So get your gun hot. When it's hot, it will instantly change the powder. When the powder changes, chase the powder basically. Don't leave it in one spot because it will just burn. beautiful bird on there so great for wedding invites that one if you like birds particularly so let's just get rid of this embossing powder so let's just move this out of the way because the technique does not require the Eureka so I need a, I've got a pencil and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the lid of my embossing powder and just as a template really, because I just need something circular. So I've got a little tea light here as well, which I did use. But you can use anything that you've got in your stash. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it onto my card there and I'm just going to draw. Sorry about the head, I'm going to have to go in again. Um, a, a circle mark around this circular lid here. So can I see it? I can see it. You might not. Yeah, you can just see it. It's just there, look. Thank you. And I'm just going to turn it round here and I'm going to pop another one, maybe just here like so. I'm just going to take my pencil line, go all the way around this lid, and into that little crease there. Like so. So we've got two circles. Now for this technique you can do as many circles as you want. You can do a half circle off the edge of a page, anything you want. So before I do any heat embossing, again, I'm going to use my anti-static bag and I'm just going to do this circle up here on the right. 
So I'm going to cover the whole of that area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pen and I'm going to use a brush nib. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to colour within that circle. Just get rid of this for you. So I should be able to see it on the black card where I've been. So all I'm going to do is take that embossing pen round the edge of that circle, trying to keep it within the circle so it looks smart. All the way around and then in that little gap. I'm just going to cover the whole circle with that pen and then I'm going to cover it with the embossing powder. Can we see that there? So we've got our beautiful circle there. So before I do anything else, just push that aside, put the lid on my pen so I don't dry it out. I'm just going to heat emboss that one. If you've missed anywhere, don't worry about it because this is where the technique comes into its own. So I'm just going to waft that a second just to get rid of the tackiness. Perfect. Same with my anti-static bag again. I'm going to go over again. And my pen again. And I'm just going to go over the whole circle again. Right to the edge. Now if you're going around fine detail, you can swap your pen out. There is a brush nib on the end. And I will need to do that at this side. Colour that whole area. It's best to get as close as you can as them leaves. And this is where you get a different feel. So this is called double embossing. And basically, it should set beautifully smooth. And I'll show you that right now. I'm just getting my gun hot. And I pop it on this time. Can we see how we're getting like a beautifully smooth circle behind that? It looks like uh, the the image has been imprint, imprinted into like, do you remember like a wax seal type of effect? So I've done that twice. Let me show you what it looks like one more time on that circle. The more times you do it, the more effective it is. It actually looks like the image is embedded into some wax circles. So same process, make sure it's um, anti-static every single time. And it just keeps all them flecks at bay. So again, I'm just going to get my pen. And cover that whole area right around that circle. Now, if you've got like a star shape and you want to do stars around, so it looks like the image is embedded into stars, you could do that. I just use the circle because that is all I've got to hand with the lid. But you could use whatever you wanted to, really. So I think I've got it covered. see how smooth that is that's triple embossing it looks like the image is imprinted into it it's stunning it's a beautiful effect so shall we just do it on our bottom circle too so I think you get the general idea so anti-static so on this one because we've got these berries in this sorry you can't see because of the anti-static because we've got the berries in the circle I need to use the um, bullet nib which is absolutely fantastic that you can do this. So I'm just going to go around those berries within that circle that we um, drew around. Go, I can't see my line now. Go as close as I can to my image so it does look like my berries are going to be like sealed into the circle. Sorry about the head. Just need to follow my lines or else it's going to be wonky. 
So I'm just going to go and then I'm going to swap out for my brush. And as you can see, my brush nib is absolutely um, frayed to death. It's been well loved, bless it. I've had this a while though, so I think it's time for a new one. So I'm taking it right up to that pencil edge, like so. And this is where you'll be able to see the difference between one layer and triple. So try, do try the um, single embossing, double embossing and triple and just see the different effects that you can actually get. But I don't know if Cam's actually showing it, but it does actually look like that image has been melted into these two wax. So you can see straight away, look, that's one, two, super, super smooth, it's beautiful. So I'm just going to do it one more time. I just need to get a bit more detail around those berries because I'm losing it a little bit. So again, anti-static. And I'm just going to bullet nib around those berries. my brush nib all over I just do this two times it's getting a little bit monotonous I think you get the idea now um, so may I'm doing it in gold I have got another card which I've already done in a different color you'll be able to see the lovely effects see that there it does look it does look like a wax seal trust me on that one it looks amazing I'm not sure if it's coming across on camera but I will take a video as always at the end to show you um, and try and show you its true beauty so before I construct this card ahead of time I have cut the word smile now these two are two of my favorite dice from the pretty, pretty penny range the love and smile they're of a great size so they go on all your five by seven cards. So I've cut smile already ahead of time and I've got the lovely hearts on there too. So because we are going with our bullet, our posh pen, as we call it, I'm just going to highlight the heart on the top of smile, on the front of smile, and this will bring it all together. And on the base here black on black it's just not a good it's just not a good sketch but anyway we're going with it and that just picks up those lovely hearts on the smile there And because of the pen as well, you will be able to outline smile. You could add highlights to smile, not just the hearts on there. Like so. Let's just give this card a brush off with something because it's um, a bit messy with all the heat embossing. it back to its true glory there we go we'll mount this one onto our card so whilst I'm mounting this onto the card 
I'm going to get ready for uh, another demonstration. I know I've seen like I'm flying through it, but I don't want to run out of time before I've shown you the fabulous second card. So I'm just making sure we're ready. We're ready, yeah. <laughs> so whilst I construct this card, here's some more inspiration for you guys. So I've added it onto some um, gold essential card. I'm just trying to get it to stick because, you know, these things don't like glitter card, these glues. Um, but it does look beautiful all the same. Can we see that there? Without the lumps and bumps. And then this one is the one we did with the hearts. And I'm going to leave it tone on tone because I simply want the image to talk it you know speak for itself I didn't want this to take away from this so I will pop some pads behind I'm just going to do it so the S encroaches into that little um, effect we did there but I will do it for when we do our photo for Facebook so I'll just set this one aside I love this technique and when you heat emboss or double emboss you know you can pop your rubber stamps into them and put images into them while it's still quite tacky so if you've got a little flower rubber stamp or something like that you can pop it in um, and take it out and you'll have a beautiful imprint in there like a wax seal so I know I keep talking about wax seals I am a little bit obsessed with them at the moment we have some wax seals coming up as well so watch this space we're so excited about that so um, let's set that one aside and move on to the next one so here is one that I did ahead of time before coming to air and what I did same same concept I did the bird in gold and this one here is the rosy rosy gold embossing powder so I thought I'd try something a little bit different. Can we see that there? It's super glossy. It looks, I don't know if you're catching that there, but anyway, you can just see it. And this is the rosy gold one from Claire's show yesterday as well. And I've double, I've triple embossed these, I believe. So you can see how gorgeous they are. So same stamp, same concept, um, just a different colour wave. And this is onto the lovely pink pattern paper from your pink paper collection. So what was I going to do? Right, okay. <laughs> so here is the love from the Pretty Penny die set. Okay, and what I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to tie it all together and bring the card together. So I'm just going to turn over this piece of paper here and I'm just going to do some ink blending on there. Now I'm just going to use a pale pink first and I'm going to create like a little ombre effect and then we'll go with picked raspberry. So I'm just going to use our blending brushes. These are back in stock soon, guys. Thank you for your patience. 
So I'm just going to make sure it's clean. So I'm just going to get rid of the, any ink on there because they are a self-cleaning head, which means you can use them on any colour. Just make sure they are clean before you move on to your next colour. And to get them clean, all you've got to do is brush them onto some white cardstock until it comes back white. So I, I think we're good to go there. So I'm going to go with the pink first. And this is the sponge sugar and it's the super, super light one. And I've cut this out of the wood grain paper from the pink collection. I'm just going to pick up some of that um, colour there. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, brush, brush this way so I get the pink lightest part on the top. And we'll do like the darker colour just across the base. You won't be able to see it just yet, I don't think. I can see it. So, can you see how we've got the little like light part there? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down into a darker part. But because we've used the rosy gold from Claire's collection, I'm going to swap this bright pink out for a more corally colour. Because this rosy gold colour here has got like an orange undertone. So, you know, best will in the world, we'll try and match. It doesn't always happen, but we do like to try. So I've got warm lipstick here, which has got an orange undertone. So I just clean this off. And then I'm going to turn my sentiment the other way. And I'm just going to bring it down. And hopefully we'll get a nice colour all the way across. Sorry about the fingers and the head. Maybe get a little bit darker at the bottom just to maybe create that third colour if we can. And then you get this beautiful ombre. So it was already on grey card, so that took the hardness out of it for me anyway. So it's just food for thought is that one. So I have a top folding up card and I've matted some gold on there to try and bring it all together. The pink will go on there like so. And this, I think, is going to lend itself super well to some sparklies as well. And I will put some pads behind there. Some small pads. Not a lot. This will all be glued together for the picture. It's just that the glue just does not want to stick onto the glitter card. So but I will stick my sentiment on. All the same. I'll just get rid of the little pieces from the back. If I, can we see this here? Can I just show you an example? If my little glued, there we go, can we see it's edged over? I just always just pinch them and they shrink in size dramatically. Can we see that there? It's gone now. So if you put little pads on and you're thinking, my goodness me, what have I done? I've absolutely ruined it. You haven't just pinched them at the back and they, they just shrink. I think they're full of air, to be honest. So um, just pull them in with your fingers and they soon disappear. And again, I'm going to catch that L through the, that um, heat embossing technique we've just done. Push that under. I need a pad there. There we go. 
another card. I would put some sparkly gems around that one as well. So that's another card, but using a different colour wave. So two cards, two different colour waves, but two totally different looks. So it's down to you uh, what, what your preference is and what you exactly like to do. The technique is the triple and double embossing though. Um, you might not want to try it in this style or this form, but do have the courage to try it on something, whether it be a heat embossed sentiment, um, you could have triple embossed that love or the smile on here. There is so many things that you could have done um, using the triple embossed technique. Don't be scared of it. It doesn't bite. It doesn't bite and you can get some fabulous results. So that's the two demos today. I will get them all stuck properly and made pretty for the picture at the end of the show. Whatever you're doing, have a nice evening. Stay safe. Stay cosy. Next week, a couple of things to tell you about though. Uh, Tuesday, Dawn Wheeler's on Pretty Penny. Wednesday, it's my launch of my alcohol markers, which I'm super excited about. And then I Mallory's on on Thursday. However, there is no studio at all next week. I'm in Germany over the weekend and then TV at Wednesday on Creating Craft. So unfortunately, we will all be missing a week. I can't be in two places at once, but we'll be back with you the week after, I promise. Okay, so have a great evening, whatever you're doing. See you all later.